So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and in today's video we're going to talk about iPadOS 15.4 Beta 1 and some of the features that did go unnoticed. I'm still going to have a follow up video this weekend talking about iPadOS 15.4 and the battery life and the performance and things like that but I wanted to talk about a few other features that came with 15.4 because there was a lot of actual physical features and tangible differences that we were able to notice with 15.4 Beta 1 aside from universal control. So without further ado, let's look at 10 features that went relatively unnoticed with iPadOS 15.4 that could be kind of game changers moving forward, but let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. We're going to talk about 10 features of iPadOS 15.4 Beta 1 that went relatively under the radar, right? Because the main ones that we got were universal control, and then with iOS 15.4, we were able to get face ID unlocked, but with mask and with glasses. But there was a bunch of new features that did come out that I did want to walk through. So the first one, I actually can't really show you because it's impossible to show via the screen. But with 15.4, third-party developers can now use that 120 hertz ProMotion display on both the iPad Pros as well as the new iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. So companies like Twitter are going to be able to take advantage of that 120 hertz display. Right now, they've been stuck with about 60 hertz, except for the native Apple applications. So all the native Apple applications will work with 120 hertz. But now with 15.4, third-party developers can now adopt that and be able to use and take advantage of that 120 hertz display, which is going to be great, especially for gaming, things like Twitter to swipe through and things like that. So that's always great to see. Another new feature is actually if we go into the Notes app and if we go into iCloud Keychain, so we go to Passwords, let it load up. And if you click on one of them, you now have the ability to add notes for those passwords. So you now have the ability to add notes into those passwords inside a keychain. So if you wanna put a little note down to maybe help you remember or a note down about that actual keychain login information, by all means, you can do that. Another new feature is inside of, you know, mostly Apple applications, but if you do have something like the TV app or maybe the music application, you now have the ability to share play directly from there. So for instance, if I go into Apple TV, click on the After Party, which is a great show. If you guys haven't seen it, I do recommend trying Apple TV because even though their catalog isn't huge yet and it can't really compete with Netflix and HBO and things like that, the quality of the shows that come out and movies that come out are absolutely amazing. Like I would consider them HBO quality. So if you go into one of the shows or movies inside of Apple TV, you can actually just press the little share button and you're gonna have a share play button that is now new right here to be able to share with whoever you want. If you click on that, you get a little splash screen, we press continue, and then you can decide who to share it with. So being able to do that directly from the application is gonna be great. Another new feature is built into the notes application, you can now scan to text, right? So before we were able to still take a picture, go into your photo library. So if I go right here, go into my photo library, find something with text, and I can just highlight it as if it's any other text and copy and use it. But now if you have something inside of the notes application, so if you go into the notes application now and click on the little shortcut, so tap right there, you now have the ability to scan and get, let's say right here. So I say I want, I want to insert Mars, I'm good to go. So now being able to use live text directly from the notes app is available to 15.4. Another interesting one is if you go into your settings, if we go all the way up into your iCloud settings, go into your passwords and security, give it a second to load up. We now have a new option all the way at the bottom. So here we have this toggle now for access iCloud data on the web. So when this is on, you can access your iCloud mail, contact calendar, photos, notes, reminders, files, and documents on iCloud.com. So iCloud.com is if you're maybe, if you aren't in front of one of your iOS devices, you're at a computer lab or something, you go to iCloud.com, just like you would to like Google Drive or anything like that, you can sign in and then download all your documents and data from iCloud. So having this toggle on allows you to do that, but if you don't want that, and for security purposes, maybe you don't want the ability to log into your iCloud outside of one of your iOS devices, you just toggle that off, and then your iCloud will be shut down to anybody outside of your iOS devices. Another new feature is if you go into your messages, you actually have the ability to start a FaceTime directly from your messages app. So now all I have to do is type in the name of the person you wanna FaceTime with through iMessage, and then you have the ability to FaceTime somebody directly from iMessage without having to go through a few steps to click on that FaceTime button. Another really cool one, which we did talk about in the previous video, but I had to reiterate on here. So if we go into your settings, go into the control center, we now have a new control for keyboard brightness right here. By default, it's not gonna be off, so make sure that you do go down here into your settings, press the plus button, and then it'll show up in your control center and then you now have the ability to adjust your keyboard settings. Now, or one thing you do wanna take note of is that the ambient light sensor is still working. So right now I'm in a very well lit environment, so it doesn't even let me manually change the keyboard brightness. It has to be a little bit more dim, it has to be darker in order for that to happen. So once you're in an environment that's a little bit darker, a little bit harder to see, then the ability to manually change the keyboard brightness will show up. And now that we're rounding out the last few updates, if we go into shortcuts, now I wish Apple did this for their actual shortcuts, 
but now inside of automations, which is something that I personally don't really play with, you now have the ability to turn off notifications. So if you guys notice, whenever I open up anything down here with these custom icons, there's a little drop down that comes up saying, hey, you used a shortcut in order to access this, right? And that's going to remain the case for shortcuts specifically. But in automations, you did have that same drop down notification bar that would that would happen. But now that's you can actually remove that inside of the settings. You cannot remove it from shortcuts, which I'm hoping will happen soon because then it would get rid of this little delay. So if I go into Safari and try to type something in, I can't until that notification comes out and then I can type in whatever I want. And then the very last feature is again, if you go into your iCloud settings, go into iCloud, go into iCloud mail, you now have the ability to create a custom email domain. So with I so with an iCloud Plus subscription, you can now send and receive emails using a custom domain. So if you are a subscriber of iCloud Plus and you want to use your own, you know, at, you know, fernandosilva.com domain, then now you have the ability to natively put that into your settings and add a custom email domain, which is great to have. So you're no longer needing to like forward messages back and forth, which is great. So those are the 10 updates that I did notice with iPadOS 15.4 beta one. Hopefully you guys learned something new, but let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So that's pretty much going to do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, Apple actually made some changes with 15.4 this year. 15.3, that entire program was all about bug fixes, performance improvements, things like that. There was like no tangible differences on any of the betas with 15.3. But then 15.4, we got a bunch of new stuff, right? We got the universal control, which has been absolutely amazing. I'm going to link my video down below if you guys want to check out universal control, how it works, what those limitations are pretty much everything that it can do. But then we also got some other things on the iOS side like Face ID with mask unlock, Face ID with glasses unlock and things like that. But again, it's a little things to kind of make your day a little bit more efficient with these new updates and feature changes and things like that. So my favorite feature aside from universal control has to be that now third party applications can now take advantage of the 120 Hertz refresh rate on the iPhone 13 pros and also on the iPad pros because those do have that ProMotion display. And then also the honorable mention has to be the keyboard brightness shortcut in the control center. I think that's absolutely awesome. Finally, Apple did something to add a little bit more function to the keyboard and not rely on those ambient light sensors to make sure that the keyboard brightness is at the correct level. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys made it to the end, leave it a little dolphin just to see how many people actually do make it to the end of this video. And I'm surprised how many people do make it to the end. So thank you so much. Every single second that you guys watch these videos, they definitely count. But again, that's gonna do it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below, what are some of your favorite features with iPadOS 15.4? Did you even download the beta program? Are you on the beta program? Have you tried universal control? Leave some comments down below because I'm always curious. But that's gonna do it for this video. Again, Apple with 15.4 seems to be getting pretty, pretty good and the beta program is very stable. But let's get out of here.